Hello, uh, we are here at the Los Angeles Times. I'm Samantha Melbourne Weaver, Audience Engagement Director. This is Deborah Netburn, one of our science reporters. Uh, we're here to answer some questions about coronavirus. Mm -hmm. uh, we've collected a bunch from readers. Uh, we'll, at, we'll pop in a link uh, so you can submit your questions. We'll come back and answer them uh, later this week and next week. Uh, so let's kick it off, Deborah, really quickly with just like the basic need to knows about coronavirus. Let's talk about the symptoms. What are the symptoms of coronavirus? The symptoms of coronavirus are pretty similar to the flu. So coughing, fever, and uh, shortness of breath. Great. And what do you do if you think you have those? You might have the flu, you might have a cold, you might have coronavirus. What do you do? So you can call your doctor and ask if you should come in. Um, the doctor may say yes, may say no. Um, but that's, I mean, that's pretty much what you can do is, is uh, see if you can get tested. Don't go to work, call your doctor, give them a heads up that you're coming in. Yeah, yeah. correct. Um, and then what can you do if you're not sick to keep yourself safe? I mean, it's so simple. Just wash your hands a lot. Cough into your, um, either like a tissue or into your elbow, yeah. And um, stay home if you're sick. That's like the number one most important thing that you can do. I know it feels like these are not <laughs> big steps, but I think that they're really helpful. You yeah. know, so we do have control and we can take these steps. I love that. Yeah. Um, so let's get to some reader questions. Okay. Um, we had Andrea Medina ask what I, a question that I love that I know you know a ton about. Um, can you get your pet sick? And will your pet get you? What are, what's the deal with pets? Yeah, I love this question. Um, so I've talked to some pet virologists, which I was pleased to learn That's existed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the answer is they don't think that your pet can get coronavirus from you and or that you could get coronavirus from your pet. I don't think that animals like dogs and cats that you know have been diagnosed with coronavirus it's possible. I learned that um, uh, cats and dogs have gotten H1N1 from their owners, but like very rarely. So I'm not going to say it's a hard no, no way, but I mean, very unlikely. So if you end up getting sick and you have to quarantine and your cat's at home with you, it's probably fine. It's probably fine, but the virologist I talked to was like, don't snuggle him. <laughs> oh, no. I know. Oh, that's what I want to do. Exactly. Sick. That's she, uh, the, she said. Avoid that impulse or disregard that impulse. So, oh my. yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> keep your pets safe. I guess is the is the key there. Um, Darian Maria wants to talk about canceling trips. A lot of people have trips planned. Um, what sh what kind of factors should they weigh? I don't think we're in a position to really say like cancel your wedding. Like don't go to Hawaii. But right. Um, what should people kind of think about? Well, um, I just read an excellent article by our um, travel editor on this very topic, and it really seems that it has to do with your own um, comfort with risk. So, you know, it's probably going to be okay. Um, obviously, you should check in like travel advisories on the CDC um, and pay attention to those, but if you feel really super anxious and like you can't enjoy your trip, then cancel your trip. Like, that's fine. Another thing you could consider is like if you go somewhere and then there's an outbreak in that area, you might have to stay there. Are you able to stay there? Like how like much would that screw up your life if you had to be somewhere for a few weeks? So those are things to think about. Um, but it really seemed to me that like all experts are saying it's really about your own sense of, of risk and what you can tolerate. So tra is traveling domestically like less risky or what? I mean, well, I'll be honest. I don't. I don't know the answer to that. Um, but I mean, I don't think there's been a ton of cases like in the U.S. So you know, I imagine you're pretty safe. But you need to. It's it's really like a decision for you to make. Unfortunately, yeah. you know. Yeah. <clears throat> um, let's talk about the coronavirus and the flu. Mm -hmm. uh, is this more contagious than the flu? You know. I'm going to be honest also that I'm seeing a lot of conflicting information about that. And the thing about coronavirus is that it's new, right? We just, we don't know that much about it. Nobody knows that much about it. Like, I wish there was some source who could give us all the information if we could only find that person, but nobody knows. So I've read that it's less contagious. I've read that it's more contagious, but um, 
I think what we know for sure is that it's pretty contagious. Yeah. So, you know, it's important to do all the things we talked about, wash your hands and cough into your elbow, mm -hmm. etc. So most of the cases of, of coronavirus that we've seen are people who have come in contact with someone who's come from an area where there is an outbreak. Um, but there's a, a couple cases of community spread. Can you explain what community spread is? Yeah, so as I understand it, community spread is when um, it starts, it's in the community enough that they don't know where you got it. So if, if I knew that you were sick and I'm here sitting with you and I got it, I think we could make a safe assumption that I got it from you. Um, and especially if you had just traveled somewhere, right? But when it's like, I'm sick and I really can't place how I would have gotten it, I think that's what community spread is. And that can, that's, once that starts happening, it's a lot harder to contain the virus because it's just kind of out there. Gotcha. Well, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Makes me, uh, relieves me a little bit that it's not like in the air or something like that. Yes. It, I don't think it's in the air. Same tr method of transmission. It's just, a, you know, who knows who I got it from. Right. Okay. Yes. Okay. I don't have <coughs> it, by the way. Just <laughs> um, I would love you even if you did. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about flu shots? Is there any like added protection if I get a flu shot if I don't have one already? What do you, what's your advice there? One thing that I've been thinking about a lot is that the flu is really dangerous. Like it kills a lot of people and we have just sort of accepted that. And um, I, it's, I don't quite understand why we have, I guess, because we're, we're so used to it. Um, but I think it's like a civic duty to get your flu shot because you can, you know, you might not die of flu, but someone who has underlying conditions, you know, could. And so I just think we really, the coronavirus to me is making me think a lot about herd immunity and just, you know, t protecting ourselves to protect others. So I would say definitely get the flu shot. It's not going to help you not get coronavirus, but it will help you from getting the flu. And that's a good thing, too. That's great. Same thing with coughing into your elbow. You should do that right. with or without diseases. Yeah, agreed. Yes. Cool. I think that's all the questions we have for today. Um, thanks so much for your time, Deborah. Oh. That's Deborah Netburn, uh, one of our science reporters here at the LA Times. I'm Samantha Melbourne Weaver. Um, leave your questions at the link, and um, we will come back later and answer some more.